Hey, I am Ashley from theruralcompanion.com and today I'm going to share with you my absolute favorite topping for homemade bread. We are going to be making apple butter in the crock pot. It is the simplest way to make apple butter and in fact I've been doing it for years and only recently found out that it's a real thing. Anyway, for this project you will need a bag of apples. Uh, this is a three pound bag of organic gala apples. You'll need a vegetable or fruit peeler, a sharp knife, cutting board, and a crock pot. I'm going to go ahead and peel and roughly chop all the apples and get them put into the crock pot. You do want to make sure you take off the skins if you don't like skins in your final product. Um, for us, we don't, so that's why I peel them. You could totally skip that step if you're okay with the skins in your apple butter. And then you also want to remove the core and the seeds uh, because that absolutely would not be fun in your apple butter. Okay, let's get going. So I just peeled all the apples. And like I said, you could really leave the peels on if you are comfortable with that. That's totally a personal preference. Um, I didn't get all of the skins off 100%, um, and a little bit of skin doesn't seem to bother us too much. Um, so a tidbit about the leftover apple peels. You have a few options with these. Number one, you could just toss them. Um, which would be very wasteful in my opinion. Number two, you could put these in your compost bin. You could give them to your chickens for scraps, or you could try your hand at making fruit scrap vinegar, which I have tried and I'm not sure if it turned out. I do um, have a finished bottle of it. If anybody has any tips on how to know if the vinegar is complete or safe or anything like that, from just the apple peels and the apple cores. Um, so at this point, we're gonna go ahead and core the apples and rough chop them and get them into the crock pot. Uh, the crock pot is going to be on low and I'm going to cook this for about 20-ish hours, give or take what my schedule looks like in the next 20 hours. Um, so I normally start this apple butter in the mid-morning on day one and then I'll finish it up on day two um, pretty much after we've finished homeschooling for the morning. Um, you could do two things with the crock pot apple butter depending on your schedule. Um, if you don't have a lot of time once you are done with the batch you can puree the apple butter and stick it straight in the refrigerator and it's ready to go or you could take the time to can the apple butter, which is what I'll be doing. And I will walk you through that if I have time, we'll see. <laughs> um, but that's what I typically like to do with it. That way it's just shelf stable. I don't have to worry about getting it all into the fridge and trying to remember to eat it within that first month or so. If you go through it really fast, just put it in the fridge or if you're gonna gift it, go ahead and give it um, in jars and just make sure you let people know that it needs to be refrigerated if it's not been canned. Okay, one last thing. If you notice, my hair is up and I am working on a little bit of a surprise slash uh, fun reveal for my hair um, over the next couple days and I am going to keep it up in the next few videos until I reveal what my hair looks like.
It is the morning of day two, and as you can tell, my voice is a little scratchy, um, so please bear with me, but we are going to see what our apple butter looks like. And if you notice, the apple butter is starting to turn brown, but it is still in chunks. So we are going to take an immersion blender and blend the apple butter. Do make sure that your crock pot has been turned off. And I did forget to mention yesterday that when your crock pot is on and your apple butter is cooking for 12 to 20-ish hours. It's a really forgiving recipe. You do wanna make sure that you are checking your apple butter periodically to make sure that it has not started to burn. Um, you may need to stir periodically or adjust the temperature of your unit. Okay, let's start blending. Okay, your apple butter can be as chunky or as smooth as you like it. We normally just run it through the blender quickly um, and try to get out all of the chunks. Next up, we're gonna add some honey. The honey or sweetener of your choice, so we're using honey to stay on the gaps approved list of sweeteners. Um, you could also use white sugar, brown sugar, maple syrup, whatever you would prefer. And this would just be to taste. I'm gonna add a little bit more honey. You're also going to add about a tablespoon of vanilla extract. As well as cinnamon and cloves to taste. Again, if you don't like either of these or if you like a different set of spices um, or if you even enjoy nutmeg, you could add that. We are not a fan of nutmeg in this house, so we typically just stick with cloves and cinnamon. Give that a good stir. If you don't have time to can the apple butter at this point, again, remember you can just stick it into a clean jar and put it in the fridge, or you can uh, let it cook for a little longer until you have time. Always make sure you're tasting uh, your apple butter before you go forward with your next steps. Now we're going to use a clean ladle and clean mason jars and we're going to just pour the apple butter into the jars. And it looks like we'll just have two pint jars full of apple butter. Let's take these over and check on the progress of the canner. Over here, I'm using a water bath canner and it has not started boiling yet, so it is not ready. Um, I just wanted to walk you through this process. Um, I know we're only canning two jars and ideally you would want the entire canner full to keep it safe. Um, but we'll go ahead and just do it with the two jars. So you're going to want to clean all the excess apple butter off of the sides of your jars, making sure that there will be a proper seal. Once the lids have gotten hot, you can remove them and dry them before putting them on the jars. And while I'm not a fan of paper towels, we do use them for canning because I feel that they are the most sanitary. So we're gonna go ahead and pop that on once it's dry. 
and now we'll use our bands. To put the bands on the jars, you're just going to screw them to fingertip tightness like that. Um, you don't want to over tighten the rings. Then we're going to put our jars into our canner. Apple butter is recommended to be canned for 10 minutes in a water bath canner. So from the moment you put them in, we'll put the lid on. As long as it's boiling, you can start your timer for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, you would turn off the stove and you would allow the jars to sit in the canner for five minutes. It's always important to label your items that you have put in the canner. Today I'm going to make little labels for the jar that wasn't full as well as the two jars that are currently in the water bath canner. I like to include all the ingredients, um, the cinnamon, the cloves, vanilla, and honey so that um, anyone that is receiving the apple butter knows what is in it. The canner has boiled the jars for 10 minutes and has sat turned off for almost five minutes. We're going to use our canner picker upper to remove the jars. I like to dump off a little bit of that excess water and then we'll stick it on a towel and allow it to cool. Not sure if you just heard, but this jar right here has just popped. I mean, that's what we're waiting for is that little pop of the canning lid to go f uh, to sink down in. Um, if you've ever opened a jar, you know that if it pops, like if you can push the little pop button, then it's not properly sealed. And we just want to make sure that our jars are fully sealed and cool before we put them into storage. Once they have fully cooled, we'll add our labels and we can either put them in the pantry or give them out as gifts. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you for uh, sticking around to watch the entire apple butter process. And I really hope that you try it at home. If you have made apple butter like this before, please let us know in the comments below. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.